In the Jerusalem area, meaning in what's called the region of the Judean mountains, uh, there are approximately 33 wineries. Uh, most of them are what we would call a boutique winery, meaning making between 6,000 to 20,000 bottles a year. That's a distinction that's relatively understood in the industry. Under 6,000 bottles, and, and you're considered either a home business or a garage, as it's called, a garage winery. Um, and over 20,000 bottles, you're already a, a, what would we call a medium-sized you know, industrial uh, uh, business. Um, so there are two or three larger wineries, which are uh, one of Israel's largest wineries is the Barkan Winery, which is based just in the beginning of the coastal plain. So it's really considered part of the same region. That's the Barkan Winery. Um, the largest medium-sized winery is the Ela Valley Winery, which is in the Ela Valley, which makes sense. Not so far actually from here in Beit Shemesh, where we are in the foothills of the Jerusalem Mountains. Um, and we visited today the Castel Winery, which is really one of the first high-quality boutique wineries to have developed in Israel in the late 80s, early 1990s. Uh, and they're making now, what, 100,000 bottles a year. So they still call themselves a boutique winery because they're family-run. Um, and they are very focused on their own particular area called the Terriwa um, in, in the Judean mountains. But really between you and me and classifications as a business, they're, they're really already a middle size, medium sized winery. And then there's another 25, 27 uh, odd different uh, small to, to medium sized or boutique uh, wineries, some of which we visited today. And it's been developed, I'd say over the last 10 years, we've seen a, a jump from maybe two or three original small wineries, which didn't export, I would say, uh, more than 10% of their of their production, to now over, as I say, over 30 wineries in the area, most of which probably export between 20 to 40, 20 to 30 percent of their their wines, and some like Castel, up to 50 percent of their wines. And of course, what's more important than the business side and how much they export or what have you is uh, the recognition that's been given both, well, to Israeli wines in general, those from the Golan, from the Galil, from the Negev, as well as from this region. Um, uh, in wine festivals and tastings around the world, and particularly here in the Judea mountains, uh, many of these wineries are considered some of Israel's best. The Flam winery, the Castel that we visited, the Elav Valley, uh, the Tsura winery that we visited, Suba, um, the Katlav winery, the Seahorse winery, we didn't visit this time, but we visited uh, a year ago, which is also another boutique, small winery, uh, winning awards at, at wine uh, competitions around the world. And that obviously is one of the things that's putting the Judea mountains region uh, on the wine map. Now, I, I started making wine as a hobby in uh, 1997, my first wine, so it's been now over 10 years. Um, I mostly make and, and have now basically committed to continue only to make Cabernet Sauvignon, although I've made Petit Syrah gotten up at four in the morning and went to the Ela Valley to to uh, pick our own grapes, as it were. But I buy my grapes from various different uh, producers around the country, in Har Bracha, near Shechem, in Gush Etzion, a very nice organic winery. Uh, and I buy my grapes here locally from Carmel Yosef. Uh, and I've made in the last few years only Cabernet Sauvignon. And as you know, four years ago, I planted a very small vineyard. Really, you can't call it a vineyard. It's a group of vines, 21 vines to be exact. Uh, it's, a, it's a small home vineyard where I hope uh, this year, for the first year after three years of Orla, the, the biblical uh, injunction to not harvest the first three years of any fruit tree, uh, which incidentally I found out in my vine making, my, my vine growing and wine making books and those who I spoke with, in fact, uh, French, American and other experts, nothing to do with either Judaism keeping kosher or anything else, uh, also insist that you shouldn't use fruit in the first three years of the vine. So this, this fourth year, will be the first year that I actually can use the grapes that I've grown here, the Cabernet Sauvignon. So I'm looking forward to, to making wine from the, own, from the grapes that I've grown in my own backyard this year.